Well, it looks like our worst fear in PC system requirements and optimization has come to pass, which is now not only games that require upscaling in order to achieve playable frame rates, we are now seeing frame generation being relied on as a crutch to play at 1080p 60 frames per second medium settings on a, you know fairly powerful hardware. I mean, we're looking at a 6700 XT that's more powerful than a PlayStation 5. 2070 Supers right along PlayStation 5 type performance levels. Uh, RTX 4060, again, kind of in that similar ballpark. So again, to hit 60 FPS at medium settings at 1080p resolution, frame generation enabled for Monster Hunter Wilds. Now, why is this such a disaster? If you're like, well, okay, we're getting to 60 frames per second. So it's very crucial to understand, you know what, how about, how about AMD's own frame generation documentation explain it, okay? So a bit of a white background here, so flashbang warning. Anyway, uh, so I am currently on AMD's own post about FSR frame generation, and please note, recommendations for frame generation use. When using AMD FSR 3 and FSR 3.1 frame generation, it is highly recommended to all be always running at a minimum of 60 FPS, here's the key word, before frame generation is applied for an optimal high quality gaming experience and to mitigate any latency introduced by the technology. Consequently, we suggest you adjust game graphics settings, resolution, upscaling, quality modes to achieve this based on the capabilities of graphics hardware being used and your overall system specs. In other words, AMD's own frame generation documentation suggests that you should not do what the recommended system requirements. Because again, by the way here, we're not, we're not looking at minimum system requirements here. We are looking at the recommended specs. So the recommended specs for how to play this game uh, directly violates the uh, intended usage of frame generation. And that's kind of scary. I don't like that. Uh, hopefully this becomes less common. Now, if you're still like, okay, but why, why is that so bad? So frame generation doesn't make your game run faster. It does display more frames on your screen, uh, but those frames aren't all being rendered by the game engine, meaning they're not responsive to your inputs, and they also can have image quality issues. But you do see more frames on your screen, which, which can help with uh, perceived motion fluidity. So your frame rate does increase. Now, the problem is the quality of those frames, and again, that they don't help responsiveness. So if you're running the game at 60 frames per second being outputted after frame generation is inserting a, uh, uh, a, a non-actual game rendered and non-responsive frame in between, means that the game is actually only rendering 30 frames per second. So your responsiveness, the, the responsiveness of the game here will feel more like 30 frames per second, although it will output 60 frames uh, to your screen. The problem is every other frame, so you have your two game, game engine frames, you know, running at 30 frames per second, you'll be inserting a, uh, a, a, an interpolated frame that's guessing what's happening in between them, and it'll have to slightly delay showing you the most recent actually game rendered frame in order to do that. Um, anyway, the point is that, 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 that uh, uh, generated frame, the interpolated frame happening between the two game engine frames, is relying on those two game engine frames to decide what happened in between. And the lower your base frame rate is, the larger there is a gap between those actual game engine frames, which means there can be a larger difference. Characters could have moved further. If there's fast action, things could have changed quite a bit between the two frames if you're only running the game at 30 frames per second, which means the interpolation has a much harder job to guess accurately what's happening in between, which tends to make a lot more noticeable uh, image quality artifacting. So. It is not a good experience uh, to run a game at 60 frames per second output via frame generation because you will get massive image quality artifacts and the game will not feel responsive because there's latency penalties to this. And, the, and again, they're not responsive frames. And again, that's only to hit 60 frames per second at medium graphic settings. So, okay. Um, first of all, why do I think this is possibly happening? Um, well, I mean, I, I did try to pull up some some footage of the game, uh, you know, in, in some of the trailers, and I mean, it it looks good enough, but uh, no, nothing about it screams, uh, you know, that a 6700 XT could only play the game at 30 frames per second, uh, you know, uh, 1080p medium. Uh, but then I also was thinking about, okay, what game engine is this being used on, uh, being built on, and what else have we seen it do? 
So this is Capcom, and, and as far as I can tell, they're using the RE engine. Now, the RE engine has been extremely performant and lightweight in a lot of games, but those games haven't been big open world games. Uh, other games where we've seen uh, uh, RE engine fall apart uh, have been things like Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is like infamously CPU bottlenecked, and there's been a lot of patches trying to make it better, but it's still not in great shape, um, especially in big city environments. So the thing about Dragon's Dogma 2 is this is more of a, a larger open world game. Uh, like I said, there can be a lot of uh, NPCs going on, and obviously Monster Hunter Wild isn't the same game, uh, but I, I would say that it's it's closer to a Dragon's Dogma 2 type game than it is to a game design along the signs of like, uh, you know, Resident Evil, uh, you know, 4 Remake or something like that, which is much more closed in uh, environments, much more linear pathways. Now, again, Dragon's Dogma 2 is very CPU bottlenecked, um, which is interesting because then if, if we look at this, here's the thing about frame generation. Frame generation doesn't rely on the CPU in order to uh, generate those interpolated frames. So um, I'm wondering if what's going on here is, is you're actually not necessarily GPU limited at, at these settings. I wonder if what's going on is uh, the game is uh, uh, CPU limited and so th this is getting you more of a uh, you know 30 to 40 FPS output in those CPU limited areas and then they're relying on frame generation to push through a CPU limit uh, to hit the 60 frames per second. I'm, I'm, I'm speculating here, to be clear, but that, that's again, I, I'm trying to wonder about, um, again, that 60 FPS here. And, and to be clear, they're saying it again up here, this is 60 FPS with frame generation enabled, medium graphic settings, 1080p output. That's, that's pretty brutal. Um, these GPUs themselves, like I said, are, uh, um, we pull them up on like tech power ups a relative performance chart if you want to see where, where yours kind of fall in here. Uh, I pulled up the 6700, which wasn't mentioned, but this is generally considered to be the closest uh, PC graphics card to the performance level of a PlayStation 5. It's not identical, but it's it, it's that ballpark. You can see that the 2070 Super uh, it, it is within a few percentage points of that. Uh, the 6700 XT they, rec they were recommending uh, from AMD, 16% more powerful than, again, what's kind of PlayStation 5 type uh, hardware. So you can see the, the kind of ballpark we're living in. RTX 4060, again, kind of in the same ballpark. So this is the ballpark of GPU. Uh, so, you know, 2080 Supers, 3060 Ti's, 2080's, 2070 Supers. Uh, th this kind of ballpark is what they're saying is 1080p 30 uh, medium, unless you kick on frame generation to boost you to 60. Now, now to be clear, it might be like around 40, because frame gen doesn't usually double your frame rate, unless you're CPU limited, actually, because it does consume GPU uh, resources. So this might be more like you'd be at like 40, 45 without frame gen, you kick on frame gen, which takes a performance cost uh, down to about 30 and then doubles it. Anyway, so uh, we could be talking about that type of situation for that, um, that level of hardware. Now, again, considering I'm, I am suspicious that maybe we're talking about some CPU limits, uh, the recommended CPUs here are the 11600K, the 12400, uh, and uh, for, those are the Intel, and then from AMD, the Ryzen 5 3600X and the Ryzen 5 50, uh, 5500. Uh, note that the 3600X and 5500 are, again, not identical to what's in a PS5, but in that kind of performance class. They're gonna give you similar gaming performance to what's in a PS5, maybe a little bit better, actually. Um, but but not we're not talking worlds apart from what's in the PS5 CPU performance-wise. Uh, so we're kind of in that type of class. If we want to dig into these CPUs a little bit, uh, the 11600K is a six core 12 thread chip from, uh, it looks like that one came out in March of 2021. The 12400, also a six core 12 thread chip. Uh, this one coming out in January of 2022. Uh, the 3600X, six core 12 thread chip uh, coming in uh, in July of 2019. And the Ryzen 5 5500, again, a six core 12 thread chip. Uh, this one coming in in April of 2022. So it's looking like all of the recommended CPUs here uh, are kind of in that six core 12 thread uh, variety from a few years ago. 
Um, but again, if we're needing frame generation to hit 60 FPS, does that mean it's because our CPUs can't keep up? And the thing is, even though there are much more powerful gaming CPUs out there now, uh, if these can't hit you know, above 30, 40 FPS in certain scenes, which again, I'm kind of speculating on due to this frame generation cap and what we saw in Dragon's Dogma, Dragon's Dogma 2, then even something like a 7800X 3D, uh, you know, even if you maybe double the gaming performance of, the, of these types of chips, which isn't even always the case for, for all of these and depending on the situation, I mean, does that mean that like a 7800X 3D is struggling around 60 FPS? I mean, Dragon's Dogma 2 is not a smooth experience on uh, pretty much any CPU hardware out there at all, um, no matter how powerful. So mm, definitely something to think about here. Uh, they're saying you'll want eight gigabytes of VRAM and again, pretty hefty uh, SSD space at 140 gigabytes. A lot of games these days seeming to take up a lot of storage space. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at for recommended specs. Looks like 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, if we drop down to the minimum spec, uh, we can see here that here they're talking about 1080p output, but upscaled input. Uh, for a 30 FPS target. And they do add some additional notes here to say that this is, um, uh, this game is expected to run at 1080p upscaled from 720p resolution. So a 720p upscaled to 1080p output. Uh, if you're going by the, the what that's usually called for DLSS and FSR, that would usually be called quality. So this would be like DLSS quality at, uh, uh, at 1080p, except that neither of the, rec of the GPUs here actually support DLSS, so we're at FSR quality. Um, uh, which renders internally at, 10, at 720p and then outputs to 1080p. Notice no men mention of frame generation here, and we're talking about the lowest possible graphic settings at 30 FPS. So we're basically talking 720p, 30 lowest possible settings. Um, uh, they're saying that you would want a minimum of six gigabyte VRAM on your GPU, which again, some of the weaker GPUs out there might not be hitting. Um, and again, that's it. Uh, that's, uh, let's, let's actually pull up the uh, relative performance chart. So say maybe your GPU isn't one of the two mentioned here. So they're mentioning a GTX 1660 Super or a, a Radeon RX 5600 XT. So maybe your GPU isn't one of those. So how do you tell where you kind of fall relative to that? Uh, so again, if we pull up the relative performance chart and we kind of scroll down, uh, so we're looking for uh, a 5600 XT or a 1660 Super. So 5600 XT uh, is falling in, it was the XT version, right? Yeah, is, is falling in right about here. So you can see that the um, the the recommended GPUs uh, were, were, were in this ballpark. And then if we drop down about uh, to about 73% of that performance, uh, we're hitting these, um, these lowest possible uh, GPUs here. Uh, which they're again saying 720p upscaled to 1080p 30 fps uh, at the lowest possible settings so to me that's also not speaking of a, of a massive amount of scalability between low graphic settings to medium graphic settings uh, considering we're lowering the rendering resolution uh, and turning down graphic settings and it's only dropping our recommended gpu uh, you know uh, to 73 percent of that performance so anyway interesting there uh, if we continue scrolling down, we get to cards like the 1660 Super, that one being at about 60% of the, the performance of the you know PS5-ish type GPU that they were recommending there. Um, if we s set these as a baseline now and take a look at this, like a 1660 Super, uh, so what other GPUs are in this kind of ballpark? Um, well, the baseline 1660 isn't worlds apart, so if you have one of those, you're maybe in this kind of performance class. The 980 Ti is not worlds apart. We got the 1070. Uh, 3058 gigabyte, uh, 1070 Ti is a bit more powerful, right? Kind of, but kind of still within the realm realm of the AMD equivalent here, the 5600 XT. So if you're in this type of uh, GPU ballpark, uh, you know, 2060 is kind of a, a bit higher up. Anyway, I'll link this relative performance chart so you can help uh, figure out where your GPU falls. Uh, relative to what they're recommending here. But one thing to keep an eye on though, is as you as you scroll down a bit, you might be hitting some GPUs that maybe only have four gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, so keep in mind that this is specifically calling out six gigabytes of VRAM. Now, whether it would still run on a four gigabyte card, uh, we'll have to run some benchmarks on this uh, when it comes out. Speaking of which, you guys interested in me running benchmarks on this game uh, when it launches? Uh, definitely let me know. Uh, the CPUs we're dropping down to, to here don't drop massively from the recommendations. Like for example, they had a 3600X uh, for the uh, you know recommended spec, which again, might not be hitting 60 FPS because if they need frame gen, could be CPU limited. They're dropping down to 3600, which again is, is 
similar to the type of performance you get in like a PS5. Um, the i3 i3 12100F uh, and then the 10 i5 i10600. Uh, so the 10600 is again a six core 12 thread CPU. Uh, this one from, coming from 2020. So even at these minimum specs, uh, they're still asking for six core 12 thread. Although if you go up to 12th gen, the 12100F is four core eight thread. So they are saying, okay, if it's a newer gen CPU, you know, this coming from 2022, uh, there it might be fast enough to get away with having. Um, uh, you know, fewer uh, overall cores and threads if each core and thread is fast enough. Is But again, that's only hitting uh, 30 FPS at lowest possible graphics settings. Uh, and then you have the Ryzen 5 3600, which is again, six core, 12 thread. Uh, and that one coming out in 2019. Okay, uh, minimum settings are still saying 16 gigabytes of RAM and again, six gigabytes of VRAM, 140 uh, gigabyte SSD. And they are mentioning an SSD is required. Again, could you try to run the game? Uh, you know, on a, on a hard disk drive, probably, but would you have issues? Again, it's certainly possible, especially in an open world game, trying to stream in a bunch of assets. All right, that's what I've got for you guys today. Um, I mean, uh, frame gen to hit 60 on, on fairly reasonable mid-range hardware at 1080p, medium settings. Uh, not necessarily what I'd like to see. Uh, are you guys interested in me benchmarking this game when it comes out? Let me know. Give me your thoughts in the uh, comment section for sure. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.